to order. Clerk, call the roll. Mrs. Kramer? Here. Mrs. Lane? Here. Mrs. Rich? Here. Mrs. Gallagher? Here. Mr. Krafchek? Here. Mr. Parzik? Here. The meeting is now open. Adequate notice of the meeting was provided by posting a copy of the time and place on the municipal clerk's bulletin board and mailing a copy of same to the press in the Cape May County Herald on January 4th, 2017. Will everyone please rise to salute the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're going to start the work session with administration and finance. Okay. Ms. And Lane. If you will let me change the subject for just a moment. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the library. Uh, everyone remembers that when we built it, there was a lot of people who said, libraries are dead. Why are we doing this? We don't need to spend this money. I want to tell you that in June, July, and August, 20,000 people visited our library. And on the past Saturday when there was Harvest Fest, 240 people visited that library. So yes, people do use libraries. And it's a proud thing we did and a beautiful building we have. This was a boon to our business district because these are people who stayed in Stone Harbor. They didn't go to Avalon. Uh, they didn't go over to the courthouse. They ate here. They shopped here. So I think this was a good move on everyone's part. So now I'll turn it over to Jill for her a and F. Thank you. Okay. Um, as the departments come up, they're going to give a brief over overview, just like the uh, departments did last meeting, on their um, o and &E budgets. Um, and if you have any questions, just a reminder, we will still be doing the um, PowerPoint presentation and going into um, greater detail, um, probably starting in December and January for those. Uh, at this point, um, what I'll do is I'll try to go in order of what the um, budgets that we gave to you. So I'll start with mayor and council. Um, last year's budget was a total of $8,875. Uh, this year, the request is for $12,987. And the primary increase um, on this is um, the borough has agreed to pay for a significant number of expenses uh, the American Legion has for the various um, programs that they do provide um, to the borough. And that's a $5,000 um, line item for that. So that pretty much is the increase for mayor and council. And borough administration, uh, the budget in 2017 was 28,000. <coughs> the proposed budget in 2018 is 29,000. And there's uh, two major um, increases, um, not that they're major, but um, the one is in uh, promotional advertising, and there was an increase for our flood maps and brochures for the CRS program. Uh, computer supplies, there was um, under the maintenance contract that went up. And there's one more, sorry. And that's it, Profession and professional fees for the CRS program. There's a $600 increase there. Okay, the next budget then and report would be from the borough clerk. Uh, the borough clerk's budget last year was 19,500 and it remains flat this year at the same amount, 19,500. Okay. Next will be the tax assessor. Um, my budget this year, um, Decreased <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. by like nine hundred dollars, <laughs> and um, that was for um, twelve hundred of that was for um, postage that was like a double. It was on there twice, so Jim got rid of it for me. Um, the increase, the only increase I have really is for tax maps, 
went from 2,500 to 5,000 for um, putting the drainage easements on the tax map that belonged to the borough. And that's about it. Otherwise, it's the same. Any questions? Thank you. Do we want to do the report as well? Yeah. Please. Come on back, Margaret. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Get back up here. <laughs> um, well, I have um, the reval is nearing completion. We had a meeting, Jill and I, with um, Frank from Vital, who's our um, project manager now. The estimated completion date is November 20th, which is the Monday before Thanksgiving. Um, he's going to get an import, an impact report for me to review, which will basically give me a line just to go down and see the percentage everyone's assessment is going either up or down. So he was talking about sending out the value letters that same week, but that doesn't really give me enough time to review it. So I'm, I would like to push that back a week. And then the letters will go out the last week in um, November, and then we'll have informal reviews with people from Vital in the library for um, the old library for two weeks in December where people can, you know, just discuss any issue they have with the new assessment. And that's about it. So when they get their letter with their new value, it'll say if you would like to discuss this. Yes, that, that's what it'll say. Make your appointment and, and so on. Right, okay. and it will give them Vital's number in Trenton to call. So, um, but I'm sure I'm gonna be um, overloaded with phone calls as well. Um, in, a, in addition, they will do um, phone interviews with people that right. obviously okay. can't come back right. down into Stone Harbor. Right. They actually predict that most of their meetings will be via the telephone. As they have been in the past. Okay. And then also, they're contracted to, um, to defend the tax appeal at tax appeals or state tax court for two years. Okay. Okay. Mark, Got it. Off, okay. off the top of your head, do you know the deadline for that tax appeal? What is the deadline? So we'll have their assessments um, by December. There's informal review with them to yes, sort of and, hash and then, out how so, they. Right. And then some might go up, some might go down. They may tweet some BCSs or something like that. But um, if they're still not happy with their assessment when they get their postcard in February, you have normally till April 1st to file an appeal, but in a year of a reval, you have till May 1st. So you get an extra month. Yes. And it, do you know off the top of your head uh, during that informal re, um, assessment, w will they change their assessment or is it just really defending what they've come up with? Uh, well, if you have, I mean, if, if a property owner has comps that would, you know, back up what the homeowner is saying, there may be some Wiggle room. So there is wiggle room. It's not, yes. they're just not defending their position. It's almost sort of like an uh, informal appeal. Yes, it's okay. an informal appeal. Mm -hmm. with, with no, you know, check, no nothing, just. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> the tax budget is going to increase $1,020 this year. And the reason for that is because the contract between the county tax board and vital uh, always had an optional line item in it where the county opted to pay for the printing of the tax bills. Starting this year, 2017, they decided not to do that. Um, however, vital comped my bills for me this year. Starting next year, we have to pay for the printing of our own bills, which is about $1,500. And my budget only increased 1,020 because I was able to drop down other line items by $500. Um, the utility budget has stayed flat, no increases, exact same as last year. Any questions on budget? Anything. Okay. Um, the direct debit program was very successful. We did our first withdrawal. Uh, we have had no bounce checks. However, since November 1st, I'm sending back half a dozen to a dozen checks every day with the generic form letter you signed up for direct debit and returning your check. Um, so that's fine. <laughs> but that'll, that'll all work itself out, you know, with each quarter. Um, the tax office and the tax and utilities office is hopping right now. As you know, the tax receipts are coming in. We're working on printing the water bills as we speak. Uh, my $214,000 deposit is off 50 cents, so if I may be excused when I'm finished here, I would appreciate that. <coughs> and Jim so kindly turned over an NSF check to me today, which I have to reverse. So uh, we're really busy downstairs and 
If you don't have any questions, I'd like to get back to my office. Any questions? No. If I may, go balance your Debbie, as I, um, as I explained in my email to you, yes. what a pleasure it was to just see the deduction in my credit, in my uh, bank statement, and not have to write out a check or check any balances. It was just delightful, and I'm sure I'm speaking for everybody else who uh, took advantage of the debit program as well. We have about 10% sign-ups. And that's just for taxes. And we have just about the same amount for utilities. And we're just as pleased. Um, we're anxious to get past this quarter, though, because we're inundated with phone calls. Um, did my deposit go through? You know, did, you, did my withdrawal go through? And as I explained in the initial letter in June, um, we're not contacting you each quarter. It's the same as when we receive your physical paper check. I don't reach out to you and say, yes, I got your check. It's, it's the same thing. It's the homeowner's responsibility to, what, to know what's being debited from their accounts and to check their bank statements. And it all depends on what kind of banking setup you have. If um, the online bankers, you can go right on your online and, and see that the transfer was there. If you're not up to modern speed and you don't have online banking, then you either have to call the bank to see if the transfer went through or wait till you get your bank statement. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I mean, just the, the phone calls and the return checks, when we get past this quarter, I'm sure most of that will go away. And we can't wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, finance. Hello. This year's, uh, last year's finance budget was $58,660. This year's proposed budget is 57960 which is down $700 or 1.2%. Mm. And uh, two lines primarily changed. The line that decreased the most, or the only line that did decrease, was the NJEIT administrative fees. And they kind of step down as the loans get more uh, further in their maturity. And then the line that increased was the payroll processing fee. So those are the two lines that changed. No, I uh, will be um, investing in the CD shortly with Crest Savings Bank at 0.5% interest. Um, hopefully put about three or three and a half million in there, which will be a little better than the 0.06% rate that we're currently getting. Okay, next up, construction. Can I, can I ask a question? I'm probably the only one who doesn't know this. Who generates these spreadsheets? It is the electric community of Lowellhead, so some of the finance. So I, I'm just curious, why, why do some departments have 2017 projections and others don't? Well, the last two years it was Delancey that stand out and a couple of the departments that fill in mm. of their budget how much of their percentage of the homeless community yeah, has passed through stand out. Oh, so that's yeah. not based on what's, what you've expended? No, that, that's, no, both that's both just those. some departments have not completed it yet. Yeah, and okay. Um, by the time we're ready to do the um, PowerPoint presentation, all of those columns will have to be filled in, and they'll be updated because um, the departments were doing these in, in September, so we'd like to update it closer to the time that we're going to actually do the presentation to the public so it has more accurate figures in it. Okay. Yep. Uh, construction. Good afternoon. Um, the construction office budget um, had to increase this year. We have two computers in the office that are um, fairly outdated and uh, having some problems with them. So that was the only area that we had to increase the budget um, by, Jim, you're gonna, yeah, we're gonna <coughs> put that in capital instead yeah. of, okay. Yeah. But the overall budget be pretty much the same. The okay. same, okay. So O&E is gonna be the same and then, mm -hmm. all right. That was the only uh, change that we had. Um, Building permits for September and October, uh, we had two new homes, uh, or no, I'm sorry, 10 new building permits for September and October, and the demolitions were about 19 for both of those months. So um, that means that those demolitions will be coming in for new permits uh, to make up the difference there. Uh, other than that, we really don't have anything else. Mike, for the entire year, how many permits have you issued? Do you recall? I didn't get that number for the year. Okay. Um, we're probably up around, what is that, 40? 40. About 40, 45, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
for the year. Right. Thank yeah, you. It's up from the, the previous year, definitely. Thank you. Without a doubt, yeah. That's about it. <laughs> okay, um, next is planning board. Let's see, Diane, how about Ray? Well, Jenny. He's, go ahead, Ray. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like chewing on it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not much, I don't have the budget for the planning board right now, I guess. Diane would have it. We got Ari will do a budget. Oh, Ari okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the only other issue before she goes over the budget, I'd just like to point out that the new um, FEMA maps were uh, became effective October 5th, and that does affect zoning, and we're trying to iron that out at the next planning board meeting come Monday. <coughs> um, Excuse me. With the new map, there is um, uh, called a Limwa line of uh, moderate wave action goes all along the bay, and it brings a lot of homes into what is called the coastal A zone. And it, so, so now we've got an area that the homes, one zoning ordinance requires the homes to be at a certain height, and another zoning ordinance penalizes them. The two-story ordinance almost penalizes them, so we're gonna try working that out at the next uh, planning board meeting come Monday. To uh, get rid of the little discrepancy we have there with the new mapping, we have we have to tweak our ordinances now, slightly. Ray, if you can generalize, where would you? Is there a particular location within the borough that you would say it's concentrated for coastal A, or is it along the the, the, the beach? But that's we don't have any homes that are very few that are actually where that line is. Okay. But the bay, it's almost all the way along the bay. A lot of homes Everywhere. fall on under that. They're all AE9 and 10 zones, but that line of um, the Limwa, what they call it, the mm -hmm. line of moderate wave action bisects a lot of property. And, and on Third Avenue, or over on Sunset, rather, it's on the street, so everything on the west, west side, side of Sunset is. falls wow. under that demarcation line. and. And it's, um, it's causing a little bit of a mm. uh, problem with the zoning ordinance that we're, like I say, we're gonna try to tweak, tweak that. And the issue that you're referring to, just so everyone on council here, I think, understands and make sure I'm, I'm relaying this correctly, is that since we have to go up higher in this zone because of this, with the topic block, you're gonna end up with what is considered a story underneath the house as per our current zoning ordinance. Even though it's still a crawl space, because of the height, it's going to be considered a story. So we need to have right. a, a resolution to that so that because the land is can still take place, but we don't, we're not in violation of the zoning ordinance. Right, the land is generally low along there. You're, you're at a five foot, four or five foot elevation to start with the actual grade, the ground you're standing on is four to five feet above mean high tide. And then when you have to be at 10 or 12 feet, to the bottom of your first floor, that puts a six, seven foot space there. So you, uh, your crawl space is gonna be six or seven foot high, mm -hmm. which is, so that's what Charles was talking about. Yeah, and, and we've discussed this at length at Planning Board, as, as Mayor Judy mm -hmm. knows, um, that this is this is an issue that, if, if we approach it correctly, could actually solve some problems with regard to storage and, and things of that nature without actually adding habitable space, so. Right. It's something we need to address, yeah. and we will address. <coughs> okay. Any any questions no. on that? Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Hello. Um, so, this year's budget was twelve thousand six hundred. It's going up to thirteen thousand six fifty. Reason being is um, for office supplies. We didn't factor in anything for the zoning officer. Um, so now all the supplies are gonna come out of this one budget instead of, because he never had a budget before for office supplies for your permits. So that went up from 100 to um, going up to 1,000. Um, and tuition and training, we have a new member coming up um, for the next year. So that will go up to 150 just added in for the training. That's all for zoning board. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Carrie. Okay, going back to planning board. Um, last year's budget was 23,660. This year's projected budget is 23,585. And that was a slight reduction primarily in office supplies. Otherwise, everything is relatively the same. And I think, 
terms of the budget in a and f that is all the departments so at this point i think engineer could give his report sure good afternoon everyone um we do have a couple grant applications pending our 2018 dot grant was just submitted in october so that's something we'll usually hear in the beginning of the year on whether or not we were successful with that grant application our 2018 small cities grant uh they like to award this around league time so maybe by next week we'll have some good news on that grant application that went in um down to our capital projects we have a few jobs that are being closed out in the punch list phase uh, the beach outfall phase three project 2016 road program and first avenue uh, contractors working on punch list items golden gate road the contractor did um, complete the additional sanitary sewer work that needed to be done down there they're still working on um, a couple outstanding punch list items and then that road will be paved um, by the end of the month um, within the next couple weeks so once we have a more definitive schedule on that we'll make sure we get everyone the information so we know uh, when the contractors coming in resident notices and that type of thing our uh, flood hazard risk reduction project is moving along um, a lot of work to be done high priority for the firm we're having uh, weekly progress meetings on that job um, we're moving through the design there 95th street we do have um, half of that road design that's a, a street where we have a grant from 2016 and also 2017 so we're combining two dot grants for that project uh, we just need to design the other half so we can get that out to bid and awarded uh, police station uh, contract will be awarded pending funding i believe you have the uh, second reading of the bond ordinance tonight so once the waiting period is over um, you'd be in position to award that contract 93rd street pump station uh, design is essentially complete we're ready to submit to the DEP for our treatment works approval and lastly our bikeway initiative project um, work is also essentially complete so we'll be um, readying that project for bids so we can get that uh, project out out to construction and that's all I have on my report unless anyone has any questions for me yeah, I, have, I have a question sure. the, the you talked about the award for the police building uh, we need more than just this resolution tonight, right? I mean, or is that has all of the the uh, issues been cleared up with uh, well, we are waiting. Marcus and uh, we're waiting for a formal uh, determination from from Marcus, which we should okay. be getting any time now, and then we can move forward at hopefully at the next council meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. I believe the borough clerk has, do you have a report, financial report to put in the record or no? I almost forgot you. I um, have a cash report <coughs> from the CFO. Cash balance $4,978,652.36. Cash receipts $907,363.61. In the water and sewer department, cash balance $804,603.71. Disbursements this month, $237,648.79. <clears throat> the Burr Clerk's Office, total taken in for the month, $2,748. And in the Construction Office, total taken in for this month, $47,911. Then I guess the question is, do you want to jump down to Public Works and Utility for Grant to just go over his budgets briefly and then come back in and, and finish up on the construction. Grant. You want. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh. I'm the bad guy, so. Because my budget never goes down. Where do you want to start? DPW general. That's the ugly one. <laughs> <laughs> we were at 104, 101.40, yeah, $101,400 for a year. That one's going up to 140, uh, $200. That is mainly because of the uniform contract, which is a little bit over 38,000 or $34,000. 
Um, just some of the other light items just were shifted around. Um, we did open up, oh, that's on the Just side. quick, just a grant, excuse me, go back to what is going on with the uniforms again? You're, they're, it's gonna increase your budget by 38,000? Yes. Because in the past, by contract, we did not supply uniforms or? Um, <laughs> we supplied the uniforms for the, the employees and it was getting to the point where we were, we, we didn't have a uniform company Okay. Supplying uniforms. We were buying the uniforms for the employees, and <laughs> if they tore a pair of pants or they got paint on them or they were stained um, to the point where they were not presentable, we had to replace them. And then we would have employees we would buy uniforms for um, that they requested at a certain size, and then now we can't, re we can't uh, return them because now we actually purchased them. So it was getting to the point where uh, my warehouse was getting full of unused clothing, um, which it, I still have a whole bunch of it I'm trying to get rid of. Um, so we talked to the union, um, and in their negotiations, they, they agreed to uh, move into a contract with um, somebody uh, who will supply Sin them and clean them, pick yes. them up, the whole thing. Mend them, replace them as needed. Um, they don't. Um, supply everything um, at this point. They're just supplying uh, pants, shirts, winter clothing, <coughs> um, and summer um, shorts and, and uh, t-shirts. So basically, Judy, we're outsourcing everything this exactly. year for the first time. Yes. So is there somewhere where there's a deduction from what we were paying, if we were paying for them? Right. Yes, there was. In the in, in each department, there was a certain amount of money uh, set aside, and actually that was not keeping up with the, with the amount and the cost of the clothing. Um, those line items have been reduced in most um, cases uh, between the general um, DPW, um, buildings and grounds, water and sewer. Um, some okay. of those line items were reduced. Um, so they were coming from all different places before, Correct. essentially, how you were paying for it was coming from all different yes. places. Okay. So this line item was put into um, DPW General for all those departments. Okay. Um, so it's taken out of one allotment instead of three or four different allotments. Um, In the long run, this is going to save you money because you won't become a retail store. It, correct. Correct. The amount of clothing that is sitting in my warehouse right now that I can't get rid of because it says Borough Stone Harbor on it. T-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, and that type of materials. I just can't give it away because uh, I don't want somebody going into a bank and robbing a bank with one of our T-shirts on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we demand, that, we demand that if someone uh, is severed employment here that they have to return all their, all their clothing. So. But it does include a company that's gonna be picking them up and cleaning them, Absolutely. amending them and all of that. Replacing them as needed. Okay. So you, do you know, Grant, the approximate amount of reductions that were made in these other areas? Um, you can see them in, in, the, um, in the individual line items for um, this budget number 250, 250 and 251. 250 is the contract mm -hmm. for public works, not for, for um, utilities. Um, the uniform line item is the one uh, just below it. Yep. That was redone, uh, reduced six thousand dollars because of the fact that I still have to um, supply them with winter gear, coveralls, <coughs> and that uh, type of material. I still pay for their boots uh, out of my my accounts, and it doesn't come out of the general fund that I that doesn't that is not attached to um, Public Works. So we still had to keep money in that in that in that line item in order to pay for those. Um, ancillary um, materials that they're uh, in, the in their contract to uh, be supplied. And I didn't want to give that to the union or to the, um, the um, uniform company because um, it's more expensive for them to, to maintain them. Um, I wasn't happy with the, the numbers that they were giving us for that material. Most of those clo that clothing, they, they clean on their own. They get a clothing allowance um, each year. That number has also been reduced on the amount of um, we 
we were paying or giving back to the employees to, to uh, launder their own clo clothing, that number has been reduced to subsidize this 30, uh, 34 five. So okay. that's where the big chunk of that is. So if you reduce that 34 five, um, that's more than half of uh, that cost. We have uh, some increases in um, materials, uh, paint. Um, you can see that line, number, not line item number has gone up um, considerably because we were taking it out of other line items and um, <laughs> it wasn't justified why we were taking it out of those line items. We have a lot of um, projects that have to be taken care of with that material is needed over the next of course of the next couple of months. Grant, um, street parking meter expenses actually went down. Yes. Four, five to thirty. Yes. Is that in regard to? Um, when we we increased the um, parking kiosks down at the south um, end uh, or the the west side of Ninety uh, Sixth Street, it was an anticipated budget on how much it was going to cost us for their contracts for replacing modems, um, bill acceptors, uh, credit card. Um, um, acceptors. Um, so that number was decreased because of the fact that we found out this year that uh, we weren't going to need that much money. Um, we're still anticipating having seven more machines, so I'm not sure how we're going to. This looks, this budget as it stands right now looks like we're going to be able to handle the newer machines as well. So that's why it was reduced so much. Buildings and grounds will be your next one. This is a good one. <laughs> this one actually went down uh, a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> In buildings and grounds, we did um, um, split out the janitorial and the um, the actual buildings maintenance. Um, materials because we, we supply so much toilet paper and, and uh, cleaning materials um, for our, our, our restrooms and all the, all the buildings in the borough. Um, it was eating up more than we anticipated out of our buildings repairs uh, line items. That's why that number is increased in buildings repaired from 7,000 to um, 20,500 and Um, the building supplies, which is uh, for, uh, 249, that number is lower from uh, 20,500 to 13,800. That's about what we spend on cleaning supplies and uh, paper products in a year's time. Okay, the next one is safe or compliant. So oh. <coughs> we have in building and grounds we have uniforms too. Yes. And that and that because wh why is that? Why our uniforms here are going up? Yes, because so, what happened I'm just was trying to understand what you know where how this is working. That's <laughs> all. So there, I I still have to supply them with um, winter gear, boots, and what I did was I took the amount of what it cost to give them a new pair of, of uh, Carhartts, a new pair of boots, um, and their clothing allowance. So, but the contract for the 36 or whatever it was, 38,000, that's for all the public works, right? That, that there aren't Correct. certain departments. Correct, it's, not, it's not broken right. out into okay. um, buildings and grounds or um, um, streets department. Wouldn't that be easier to put it, never mind. Put it all in one number? Place, yeah. In one all place? Right. All in one place. Y I would love to do that. I would love to eliminate a lot of line items that exist right now in Edmonds, and, and <coughs> but they're there. Um, okay. so is there any reason not to put this uniform? It's because why? well, you, well, I don't you do a program people. budgeting, so if you start right. pulling it out, then you're truly not going to know what it costs for right. to operate specific budgets. Okay. Um, with with the uniforms, if you remember when we were going through the union contract, one of the things that we said from the beginning was the contract was going to be more money. I don't want you thinking that 
it's supposed to be less money. <coughs> it was going to be more money, yeah. yes. But we just felt, over number one, over time, it was a better program. The uniforms would last longer. The uniforms would look nicer um, while they're out in the public. And then over time, you should see that figure going down, but it won't be at the same level that was in the contract originally. It did take a lot to get it started. So hopefully that number goes down. But like I said, there's two diff there's, uh, different uniform line items in each department to subsidize their boots or the, and that, um, those materials that they need, as well as the supervisors um, for each department. So what I did was I, I took what it was going to cost me per year um, for, for each of those um, employees. Some departments have more employees than other departments, and that's why that number went up, because of the amount of employees within buildings and grounds, including the supervision. Not me. <laughs> okay, safety compliance. Safety compliance, the only thing that really went up on that is the, the cost for um, the contracting uh, equipment, uh, same line, uh, service contracts, and that's for our um, um, for our uh, fire extinguishers mm -hmm. and our safety. Um, cleaning the um, the yearly cleaning and maintenance of the, um, the fire department's um, hood system that they have in their commercial kitchen and the alarm systems that we have here in, in uh, all of our buildings. And we, we every time we bring in a, a new building online, we have to come up with code on, on the uh, fire alarms and the elevators and, and the fire extinguishers and the inspections. So that's the only reason why that number went up to cover those costs. Solid waste. Solid waste is going up a thousand dollars, and that is basically to cover um, maintenance on the um, the equipment. Some of the line items were adjusted. Um, the only two that uh, stand out are the. Uh, Vehicle repairs went up a thousand dollars, and then the um, cost of tires has gone up. But other line items have been adjusted in order to uh, satisfy that. Their union uniform numbers have gone down drastically. That's gone down um, from sixty-five hundred to thirty-two hundred, and that is because we pulled out uh, what we what we purchased for them and only put in. The amount of employees times the amount of um, it would cost me to replace their um, their equipment and, the, and their clothing that we're responsible for. The next one is the sanitary landfill fees for the county. Uh, that just went. I, I just increased that two percent. I'm not sure what that's going to be until they bring us our their numbers for next year. And What's our total number of public works employees? Uh, 35 right now, we're down to 32 right now. I have three openings that I'm trying to fill. Two of them in grounds and one in uh, utilities. Okay. And then water sewer. This is the big one. And as uh, Michael attested to, we have 40. 45 new homes going up this year. And every time we have a house come down, new infrastructure goes in. They go from a single three quarter inch meter to a, um, a one inch meter for services and then three quarter inch, the house uh, three quarter inch turns into their irrigation and their dock water. Um, so with utilities, utilities is standalone. It's not public works. It, it uh, pays for itself. The monies we bring in are the monies that pay for the, the materials that go out. And um, this is my anticipation of what we're going to have to put out for next year in um, 
replacing sewer laterals, replacing water laterals, uh, the meter pits, the meters, and all the materials that go along with it, asphalt. Um, when we take when we take materials out of the ground, we can't put the sand back in. We have to put um, gravel back in the holes, which is costly. And the number for asphalt is not going down, and then neither is uh, any of the materials that we're, we're replacing. That's why this budget has gone up so much. Um, I just want to clarify something on, on here. The cost for the group insurance, um, Grant had estimated at 125 the actual will remain the same based on the figures we receive from the state, so it will stay at 88,000. And then um, the NJEIT fees were at 25,000. That's actually gonna go down to 17,000, so. You saved a little bit there, Grant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I adjusted it on this one here. Mm. I'm not sure if they, uh, the one that you gave for the- Well, that's significant. Yeah, that's yeah. A, yes. really significant. Close to yeah. the, uh, you're 88 to 125 right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 37,000, yeah. and we're really, the differential here is really 518 to 572. So you're okay. halfway there. Yeah. That one line item mm -hmm. makes up. Yep. Another, another line item that increased uh, significantly is our, um, the cost for electric and gas, and we also for um, um, chlorine gas that we, we purchased, which has to come in from Pennsylvania. We are still moving forward on, on uh, replacing that with uh, chlorine tablet system. Um, I talked to, mm. I talked to um, Jill this afternoon and that deal for uh, Remington Vern to do the um, engineering work there has been approved. So that is moving forward. So just to give you a heads up that <laughs> it's not stalled. It's just gonna take a little time to get it right. Will that be in play for next summer? Depends on how fast our engineers can get <laughs> on those plans. We'll move fast. <laughs> I'm hoping. That'll bring that cost down um, considerably. Most of that is because <coughs> of transportation and permits um, to get it into New Jersey from Pennsylvania and um, the actual cost of, of the, the chlorine gas itself. What's the insurance, the $37,000? Flood insurance, property insurance? Yeah. It's number 548. That's, that's the GIF, that's the utility share of the um, general insurance through the GIF. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think that's, anybody else have any other questions on utilities? Yes. Quick public works report. I'll start with Joan, sorry, Joan. No, you're not <laughs> He's doing it. Okay, yeah. go ahead, Joan. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta find it, sorry. I got a lot of paperwork here. <laughs> you like to do it. Okay, just some highlights of things that are on the uh, report and as are ongoing as of right now. ADA mats, ADA um, mats are off the beach um, and have been stored away for the winter. Um, paving of utility laterals are continuing as uh, as weather permits. We put down in uh, September 18. 0.92 tons of asphalt <coughs> in laterals. Uh, right now, 103rd Street uh, ADA Beach crossover is being modified and uh, repaired because of some of the damage um, and the age of the uh, crossover to make it safe. It's not going to be a complete um, change out, um, but we are replacing the uh, hard surface and the direction that the path actually goes down onto the beach. Uh, to make it easier for us to maintain it during the season. Right now it's too narrow for our equipment to get up into the uh, crossover to clean it out. 
Uh, Marina floating docks will be coming out on November 15th and bubble si bubbler system for the pilings will be going in soon after. All the parking kiosks and meter heads have been uh, removed and put into storage for the winter. Sand fence on the beach from, one, from 80th Street to 95th Street uh, will be installed over the coming months by the Solid Waste Department on Thursdays and Fridays. Hopefully that will be um, weather permitting. Uh, the Buildings Department has removed all the concession <coughs> stands off of the beach and are stored at 95th Street uh, parking lot, beach parking lot. Um, they will be inspected and repaired um, over the winter months. Over 300 hours were uh, spent on special events uh, and seasonal decorations in September. Monthly safety inspections are done by the Buildings Department, um, which includes all of our buildings, the four well houses, two lift stations, uh, five public works buildings. They also inspect all of our ladders, fire extinguishers, eyewash stations, and emergency lighting signs. Uh, the department has been working on public works office. We're reconfiguring uh, the office space that we have right now bec uh, because of the amount of um, file storage that we need. All you have to do is come down and look at Rocky's um, cubicle. It's uh, overflowing with materials. <laughs> so we're trying to make it um, more user friendly um, for the people <coughs> we have there. So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to move a doorway over, expand the space that used to be where our copy machine is, and we're going to move Rocky away from the windows and uh, put him in that space, give him some more room, um, <coughs> as well as expanding the, um, the, clerk's, um, the clerk's area um, at the front um, reception area, as well as um, giving Lisa some more room uh, where her cubicle is, and hopefully and then we're going to replace the carpets and uh, <coughs> reconfigure the uh, office um, desks and, and <coughs> storage areas that we have. Uh, the grounds department is still we working on the weekly cuts because of the normal uh, abnormal temperatures. Um, irrigation systems are being winterized as we speak. Bird sanctuary's holly path was uh, cleared of debris because it was closed for the for the uh, summer season and will be open for the winter. Um, all the urns and hanging baskets have been removed. The flowers have been removed. The uh, urn, the baskets <coughs> have been uh, taken down and, and put into storage. Automotive department, uh, monthly services on, on police uh, vehicles is being completed. Uh, monthly inspections of uh, fire departments is done on the first Monday of the the month. Uh, <laughs> we just completed a sheriff's service request from Middle Township. One of the rescue squads um, purchased a, a an SUV that was green, and they asked us to paint it for them. So we did that last week, um, and he picked it up today. Uh, they should be sending uh, Jim a check for the materials that we used to paint it. They also requested that we. Uh, look at painting a couple of their Hummers that they received from uh, OEM in the, the uh, springtime if possible. Solid waste crew is uh, working the winter route, which is Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Um, Thursday and Friday, they'll be working with the other crews and uh, taking care of brush complaints, um, requests, and uh, commercial properties. Uh, tonnage numbers continue to drop for, um, for trash, with recycling numbers continuing to rise, which is a good thing because they want us at, uh, at 50%. Um, hopefully that <laughs> we can achieve that within the next couple of years. Have we been doing better at least? Um, we have been, yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> the materials are, are lighter in weight. And your plastic bottles are lighter, your, your, uh, your paper products are lighter, and the balance on the two is, is becoming um, difficult to reach that 50%, but it's coming. Grant, I want to step back for one moment when you said you were, we'd get a check for painting the vehicles. 
for the materials. But w w where's our labor come into play here in the time allotted? It's, it's just like any um, um, shared services. If, if, um, if um, Avalon wants us to, to, to lend them a piece of equipment to do a project, um, we'll send an operator with that piece of equipment. We don't charge them for that. That's what a shared service agreement is, is all about. There's no stipulations, like we already did one piece of equipment. Now you said there might be two more Hummers. Doesn't that Correct. take our men away from what they're We'll doing? only do it if we have time to do it. Okay. We won't take it away from, the, from the, the work that we have to do here. Stone Harbor comes first, then whatever else that hap after that happens. It's just like in, um, when we had the uh, blizzard in 2010. Um, Middle Township contacted us and we plowed um, we plowed um, the manor and we plowed um, Bayberry Drive, we plowed all, everything on, on the east side of the parkway for them. We didn't charge them for that. I understand I that because that's like a, an emergency case, mm -hmm. but I'm just wondering about mm -hmm. how many vehicles, is there a limit to how many vehicles we're going to paint or reconstruct? And like I said, it, it, it will only be as, as our time will allow it. I Graham, won't, won't I do that. Are there reciprocal services that we ask. receive? Yeah, that was, yes. that was my question too. Yes. What are we receiving back from the shared service? Yeah. We do. We do with their ambulance services. We do with their fire services. Um, if, if we need some, them to do something for us, we'll give them a call and, and they'll do the same for us. And does that happen regularly? No, not really, no. I mean, it, even this request that, that we've had, that's probably the first one we've had in, that I can recall for them, from them, so. Oh, was your question, do they ask as much as they? Receive. Yeah. Right, exactly. and I think you took She's it the other way. She's saying like tit for tat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what okay. I think you yeah. sort of meant. It's so it's not like they're asking all the time and we no. never no, ask for anything back. It's few and far between that the request Any is requests made. come in from any, any of the uh, municipalities. Okay. And we've done the same thing with North Wildwood. Um, we've lent them equipment and, and operators during the, the, the problems they had on their beaches with the, um, the erosion. So we sent a couple of pieces of equipment over there, uh, I don't know, three years ago, four years ago. Okay. But it's I think what they're looking for is you've given a couple examples of us helping. Every example is us going somewhere. Do you have any examples of people coming here? Right? Is that what you're looking for? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I think the last time Avalon um, lends us their, their um, driver and their semi truck when our bulk trash uh, pickups are too much for us to handle. There's a perfect example. Okay. And that's at least twice a year. Okay. They lend us yeah. the, their materials. Okay. When it does snow, we do Third Avenue though, most of the time. That's county. <laughs> but we, we do, do it all the time. It's our street. We take care of it. And they know that we're doing it. Yes, they do. And do they provide the salt or anything like that? Don't talk about that. Um, they do come through and they salt. And when they do that, we'll keep our trucks off of that so that we're not double dosing the, the street. And we'll keep it for our, ours. But <coughs> in a situation where we know that it's hazardous, we won't wait. I understand. So. I'm glad of that. Yeah. yeah. Including the bridges. I mean, they, I was just they say, bring their trucks next. over to yes. see. They have to plow all the bridges. Um, the bridge commission is required to plow all the bridges. We take care of 104th Street. We'll clear 96th Street Bridge and the, and the South End Bridge when we know it's getting hazardous. Um, we won't go any further into Middle Township, um, but we will clear those bridges to make sure they're safe. And we'll salt them when needed. That's because we're good guys. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know where they come in sometimes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mentioned solid waste crew is going to be helping on the beach. And that's it for public works. Thank you, Greg. And I want to just reiterate to everybody, and especially the public, that trash and recycle are collected once a week. They don't stop at every house anymore. Mm -hmm. So if you have somebody down for the weekend or somebody visiting, please call public works, leave a message, and then we'll come and pick the trash up. Yes, whenever someone calls and we don't, we're away, uh, if it's after hours, weekends, 
we have a contact system. And um, Rebecca will sit there and, and listen to every single message and then upload them onto our contact system. So they are taken care of. And brushes, um, this time of year, people are cutting trees or bushes. Uh, That's picked up if you call and when you call. Yes, our tonnage numbers did go up um, after the storms that we had during September, late um, August. <coughs> um, I did fail to mention that uh, we had the snowplow rodeo for the, the oh, Cape May yeah. County. Um, and good. one of our employees, um, Dominic uh, Grassi, won the um, um, Class B um, first place out of three awards that were given out. So. And I want to give uh, Amanda a compliment. Did you want to tell that little story? She was the first time that she <laughs> ever drove Yes, a, we, a um, plow. One, of our new, one of our new employees just got her CDL license, never, um, never worked a plow truck before. We took her down uh, just through the experience, and she came in like fifth, fifth in her, in her, um, in the class B. <coughs> You, ha you have to Not back bad. up that vehicle, and you yeah. you can't see. You have to go and to the loading dock. She came dock. within yep. two, in two, About inches? two inches, yep. two inches of where she should have been. Wow! So I was like, "Oh, this is great." <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're very proud of. <laughs> okay, water and sewer. Just a few things. Hydrant flushing is underway uh, throughout the borough, which is required by the DEP. The process. Um, is to remove and um, and to scour the the um, the uh, water mains. It also is is to um, to any of the stagnant water, especially down at the south end, where we have a lot of dead ends and no hydrants at the dead ends to uh, flush them out, to get any stagnant uh, water out and uh, increase the pH, uh, not the pH, but the uh, chlorine levels in the water. Um, September's water usage went down um, 0 0.6886 uh, gallons from last, this time last year. Um, let's see. We had 16 uh, final meter reads the last month, which have been completed. Not 89 markouts. A lot of that is from, from uh, all the paving work that has been done with the utilities. Um, and as uh, Ed um, stated, the um, Golden Gate will be paved within the next couple of weeks. <coughs> so that's uh, about it. And when do, when do these the <coughs> asphalt? When it, what's the deadline for the a, the asphalt plants close down? It's um, usually end of November, December. So this is most uh, probably even closer to January, oh, depending okay. on the weather. If the if the weather is is uh, consistent <coughs> below a certain temperature, they'll close early, just to um, rehab the plants. So this so is they're ready for the spring. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, Fran, you got you have two uh, you have you have two items here under the marina where you're you're filling holes with the bulkhead. Yes, we have uh, two, two areas um, that we have uh, breaches in the bulkheads. One is between uh, the steel bulkhead. Um, on the southwest corner and where the vinyl bulkhead um, matches up. Um, there is a hole in the bulkhead. So is this something we, got, we should well, we looking at? Well, we slurry sealed it for now, mm -hmm. uh, and then we got to decide on how we're going to repair it in, in the future. And then there's another one um, on the parking lot off of 3rd Avenue. Um, between our property and the neighbor's property on the south, also on the southwest corner of uh, our stone parking lot. There is a breach in the bulkhead, I'm not gonna say whose bulkhead, but um, that we keep having to fill in because of uh, washout at the base of the bulkhead. But at some point, you're going, that's gonna have to get budgeted yes. for. It's not our bulkhead. The problem is the neighbor's bulkhead. Uh, okay. Well, we do have two bulkheads that are going to need to be replaced. Um, one is one, 114th Street is rotting out from the base. That's a very large bulkhead. It's going to cost us about $400,000. That's, that's about um, 300 feet of bulkhead that needs to be replaced there. <coughs> and the other one would be 90, 
94th Street. There's a wooden bulkhead, and it's below um, where I'm anticipating where our bulkhead lights are going to end up, which I hope we uh, decide on that pretty soon. And the, you have an item here that the, the beach outfall pipes are checked daily. Yes, they are. And what about the bay? Um, they're uh, checked a little bit less frequently because uh, the, the beach outfalls are in the two that we have are in bad shape. Um, we have a lot of vehicles that traverse um, through there during the winter months when they're fishing. We just want to make sure that they're not damaged or, or uh, need of repair. But the bayfront you're getting to weekly? We, what? We, it's probably monthly because unless we have a major storm, there shouldn't there are there's no issues with the uh, the duck bills that are on there. We do have two that have to be replaced. Um, that we have um, POs in for right now, yeah. waiting for them to come back. Where, where are they located? Um, one is at the end, of, uh, one of them is at the end of Golden Gate, and the other one is at um, Sunrise and 103rd. <coughs> if, if I, <coughs> and I won't ask any more questions, but I think in the budget, this year's budget, we had $20,000 in there for duck bills. Mm -hmm. There's usually about twenty thousand a year. And did yeah. we did we we bought those? We procured those, and did they get installed? Yeah. What's that? It takes usually about uh, three to six weeks for them to get a, for the um, once we get the PO out and the paperwork out to the company. It takes about three to six weeks for them to get them back to us. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Anyone else? Thank you, Grant. You're Thanks, welcome. Grant. Thank you. Utilities. Wait, we done public works, right? Yep. That's Next up is the construction ordinance changes. Do you want to then keep going? We'll go to utilities and save all discussion for the end. Will we have enough time? We I think we're, we're finished with 30 with minutes, to be honest with you. Do you have anything, anything utilities? I think we're finished with the utility. Yeah, we're done. Okay. Did you want a planning board report? <laughs> and then you can have it. <laughs> All yours. <Thank> you. <laughs> okay. You're so good. <laughs> planning board, last met on Monday, October 16th. And at that meeting, the, boat, the, the board voted to approve Mott and Associates to complete a utility line relocation feasibility study for the relocation of the transmission lines that were installed on 2nd Avenue. The idea of completing this discussion had fir or completing, the, completing this study, I'm sorry, had first been discussed in the last master plan review subcommittee meeting, which was held on Wednesday, October 4th, prior to our planning board meeting. And the subcommittee agreed at that time that a feasibility study would be helpful to them as they continue forward with the master plan review. So at the last meeting, Mott Associates submitted a proposal to the planning board, and this proposal would not exceed $10,000. Um, I'll give you what the details of the proposal are. And as council is aware, money was approved for the planning board to hire consultants and experts to facilitate the review and the updating of the master plan. So I will give you the details <coughs> of what the proposal is for the relocation study. Stand by. They will review Atlantic City Electric's cost proposal for the second phase as it relates to relocating phase one. They will meet and discuss with Atlantic City Electric at length the problems they feel would result from putting the electric lines underground, as well as what role they will be willing to assume to ensure the completion of any work associated if it is deemed feasible. They will look at ways to reduce costs to make the project feasible, possibly through phasing, coordinating restoration work with road projects, grants, et cetera. Legal issues that may arise will be analyzed with the input of the borough solicitor along with experts in the utility field. The issues may be discussed with the Board of Public Utilities should it be deemed necessary to ensure safe, adequate, and proper utility service at a reasonable cost. And 
They will research the feasibility of placing the distribution lines underground along with the phone and cable, which bring a separate set of issues and additional costs. So in a nutshell, um, what has been authorized is for Mott Associates to start to review with, based on those items and not to exceed $10,000. Right now, there is a meeting scheduled with ACE tentatively for November 21st, which is Thanksgiving week, and we're coming into a little bit of a problem because it's just a busy time. At this time, it's a tentative meeting, but it is on the books, and if we can't get anything scheduled quickly, then we will be moving forward with that meeting. Um, the Master Plan Review Subcommittee continues to meet monthly. They're meeting on the first Wednesday of every month, and they last met on Wednesday, November 1st. And the next planning board meeting is this Monday, November 13th. Any questions? I just wanted to add real quick um, one other item that was discussed at the last planning board meeting, which we authorized our solicitor, Andrew Katniss, to follow through on would be uh, redrafting an ordinance pertaining to the established bulkhead line in Stone Harbor. Um, and just a little background on this, the purpose of this established bulkhead line is to maintain um, building setback along the bay fronts to allow for um, visibility and non-obstruction of, of views along the bay front. Um, and, and it's particularly important in some areas more than others. But that being said, um, as part of the category of a structure along the bayfront, pools are included as a structure. The purpose and intent of the setback from the established bulkhead line from a zoning standpoint really pertains to structures above grade. That being said, um, the planning board felt that with development um, as it exists now and in the importance of pools to homeowners, that pools should be excluded as an exemption from being designated as a structure. Thereby, if somebody wanted to put a uh, pool up to this established bulkhead line, they would be able to do so and not have to um, comply with the 10-foot set setback rule. And in doing so, they would not obstruct views. So the purpose and intent of that established bulkhead line would be still held in place, but a pool would be exempt from that. So that is being promulgated by our solicitor and an ordinance will be drafted for council's full review, I believe, at next meeting. He's bringing, a, bringing something to us Monday. He's bringing it to us Monday and then we will review it and make any changes and then bring it before council. But I just wanted to update council on that. Thanks. Anybody have any questions on anything from planning board? No? And back to you. Okay. Um, I'll let Jill review these suggested ordinance changes. They're basically everything we discussed previously with the ones that are darkened that you will see. There were some additions. This was reviewed in depth at ANF, and um, we unanimously agreed that we would like to bring these forward so we can discuss it again mm -hmm. tonight, and I'll let Jill take you through it. Uh, I think we all saw the report from um, uh, the um, Shapoa, and uh, they tremendously support. A lot of people replied and tremendously report and support uh, these changes. Um, so, Jill, I'll give it to you. Okay. Uh, the first um, item is A, no demolition and no driving of pilings for the period July 1st until the Friday immediately following Labor Day. And this is residential and business district. Um, B, no work on any site prior to 8 a.m. or after 6 p.m. And we added in at any time of year. Uh, originally, we, we had listed it, it for the summertime, but we wanted to make sure it was clarified and everybody knew that the actual um, times for all, all throughout the whole year is 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. No heavy equipment prior to 9 a.m. July 1st through Friday immediately following Labor Day. No work at all. C, no work at all on Sundays beginning July 1st through the Friday immediately following Labor Day. No work at all on Memorial Day weekend, which includes Saturday, Sunday, Monday. 
no work on Thanksgiving Day weekend, which includes Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. No work at all on July 4th. No work at all on Labor Day weekend. That includes Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Only work related to interior work is allowed on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. from July 1st up to and including the Saturday after Labor Day. And that was worded in such a way that you could actually do work outside, but it had to be something that was related to work that you're, you're doing on the inside of the home. That addressed some of the concerns from the contractors. And then E is a new addition. All contractor information, including the name, address, and emergency contact numbers, along with all permits issued, must be prominently displayed in a waterproof box on the construction site. The specific size and location of the box shall be determined by the construction official. And this was uh, a request um, from several council people uh, that they wanted all the information in case a resident had an issue with any of the subcontractors or the contractor. All the information was readily available. Are we going to start with each one or what are we, how are we doing this? No, wherever you have a question. Want to just, no, just wherever you have a question. I don't think we have to go down them one after the other. We've already discussed uh, most of them. I'll start. I, I, um, if you recall, I, I said at the previous meeting that I didn't think these, perhaps these uh, proposed ordinances uh, didn't go far enough. Um, and, I, and I'll be honest with you that if, if, um, if this were going to a vote tonight, I would vote affirmative for these. Uh, since we talked about this last, uh, one of the builders, uh, Matt Pappas, who's in the audience, uh, sent us this, this letter with his comments and thoughts uh, and, and a proposal in there about these ordinances, a lot of which he agrees with and doesn't have any problem with. He has uh, some issues with a few, one of the things that he proposed um, is that we sit down with uh, two or three, I don't want to insult anybody in how I say this, but two or three of what we consider the reputable contractors that work in Stone Harbor on a regular basis and just go over these proposals and see if maybe we can uh, tweak them a bit, maybe make them better maybe in some cases make them more stringent. Um, and I think it, uh, it would behoove us to do that. I mean, I don't know what it takes to build a home. I don't know what the planning process is and, and how long a lead time is for materials and, and things of that nature. Um, these gentlemen do. Uh, and I would feel, personally, I would feel a lot better if we sat down and listened to their input. I know we had all the contractors here last month, and they, many of them got up and spoke their piece, but we really didn't have any one-on-one -on -one interaction with them. Um, I'm fairly confident that mo most of these things, if not all, will be, uh, will be approved by council. Maybe some additional things will be approved based on what we find out from if we do sit down and talk to these people. I think we owe it to them. Um, Ray, just I think the I think the you know if you look at the responses that we got to the or Shapoa got to the survey plus the individual uh, complaints that we all heard from homeowners uh, in the past, ninety five percent of it is about parking and equipment and trailers. What we're proposing here doesn't address any of that. I'm not saying we shouldn't do this, I think we should do this, but if we talk to some of the contractors, make sure they understand our concerns, maybe they have some ideas on how we can control the explosion of trailers and equipment so that we don't have, you know, if there's 15 men working on a job, we don't have 15 cars on the street in addition to the work trailers, in addition to the heavy equipment. God forbid if there's another one down the street being built, now we got 30 cars on the street and trailers and equipment. I, I think we owe it not only to the homeowners and the taxpayers, but also to the people that are building these houses to sit down and hash this out 
tweak what we need to tweak if we think anything does, and then bring it back. I'm not saying we wait a month or two months. Bring it back in two weeks for a first reading. But I, I, think, I think we at least owe them that, to sit down. And, and uh, if, if Mr. Pappas, I mean, Madam Mayor, if you don't mind, if Mr. Pappas would like to address council on your three-page letter and your proposals, the and mic is why don't we, right, Why don't we do, in the interest of time, we can do council members and then at our first, when we go into the meeting, we can have Mr. Pappas come up at public right. comment and then there's not time restraints. Sure. Okay. And Ray, if you remember correctly, um, we discussed this at the last meeting with the contractors here that perhaps they would uh, initiate a, a meeting with all of us and have somebody from them represent us. So I think it's a good idea to go forward with this. You said you would vote on everything here. I would say I would not vote on everything that's in there. Uh, one of the things, I have a problem with the Saturday one. I would like to eliminate Sundays altogether, not just from July 1st. I think everybody deserves that one day off. And if you give them more leeway on Saturday, then I feel Sunday might be appropriate for everyone to have a day of peace. Um, you have heavy equipment in here. I'd like to find out what you feel. I don't mean you per se, I mean everyone. What is the definition of heavy equipment? How do you say, I don't know how you go up to a, a building site and say that's heavy equipment, that's not it. What is the definition of that? I think that has to be uh, put in there. Work related, um, we went over this before, to interior work. So they're doing tray ceilings or they're doing woodwork. It doesn't say this here, but are they allowed to go outside and cut that? They should be allowed to go outside and cut that. The Just way by, by way of clarification in our that. discussion, the idea was to, it was sort of a middle ground to allow some work to take place on a Saturday, um, and by all means, cutting could certainly take place outside, but it would at least eliminate, um, you know, what you hear, the pneumatic gun that will be involved in installing siding or exterior trim that is, you know, repetitive and um, ongoing, whereas, mm -hmm. If it was just limited to inside work, you wouldn't at least have all these trades going on on a Saturday. So it was sort of, um, just for clarification purposes, a middle ground of discussion. Would, yeah. Is that correct? But yeah, how, about a, how about a wet saw that's cutting tile on it, the floor? I think it, the, the, the idea is anything indoors, whatever's indoors, it's really more or less eliminating roofing, siding, exterior right. trim, okay. exterior decking. Anything inside. Anything right. can be done, it can be performed outside with uh, a wet saw with uh, whatever you might have to use for interior work, as long as it's related to interior work and you're eliminating that roofing, siding, <coughs> trim. Excuse me. So you don't have all those trades going on outside um, on that particular day. Um, Demolition. I do understand your comment on, I oh know I don't mean to interrupt, no, on go Sunday. Ahead. Um, I think the only, you know, every Sunday is, uh, and, and again, I, the way I at least approach this, um, we're getting feedback from homeowners, from contractors, from council uh, on our subcommittee, and really just kind of um, letting everyone have their opinion and then doing what's fair. I mean, that's really what our job is. Um, I understand completely that Sundays, and in, in, in for many people, are, are sacred, so to speak, in, in more ways than one. But that being said, there's, um, I also know of subcontractors that um, they, uh, they observe their faith on a Saturday and they actually would prefer to work on a Sunday. So by doing that, then you, you basically you know, take, that, take two days away from those people. So I'm, I'm reticent to, to really just carte blanche choose Sunday as the day for that reason, but also then you're talking about 52 days out of the year. Um, that you've now eliminated from progress. So, and then taking what Chapoa said here as the summer being sacred, I think items really A through A through E or A through D really focus on that portion, um, how their weekends during the summer are sacred. That's really was their focus when they came here. And so I think some of these items are, are, are you know, D is a give and take, and, and, and we work through that so that we can still have progress, but it's limited 
in terms of the amount of intrusion on a Saturday. And the other ones are, are good just for the enjoyment of homeowners and the holidays here in Stone Harbor in general. So I think it's a good middle ground. I know there was some concern by contractors on the um, demo and pilings um, because now that's two trades you have to take care of before that deadline cut off. So that could be a little bit harsh because now you have to now, now a homeowner has to settle on a property, demo, and get pilings in before they can continue the project. So that's something I would like to discuss with some of the contractors further, like Ray suggested, um, and see how, how, really how onerous that is on them. And myself also, because most of the demolition that I've seen over the past 25 years is done in one day. Right. So if you don't want pilings, Pounded in, I understand that. But the demolition can be, and that could even be put in there. Demolition must be completed within a 24 hour. Well, and there's a distinct difference between demolition and pilings. I, exactly. I understand the pilings are can involve pounding, and that is that's certainly not, it's usually pretty <laughs> quick and as demo is, but when demo takes place, there's definitely a certain amount of dust, and you have trucks coming and going, hauling, hauling the debris away. So in terms of intrusion and, and, and um, uh, in that regard, demolition is, seems to be more of a intrusion on, on your peace and quiet. Um, the, the, the pilings to me are less so, so it is a consideration. And I do feel that our, our ordinances, and we had some in place, I believe our ordinance always read 8 a.m. to 6. That's what our ordinance read. But I don't think it was ever enforced. So I think some of the ordinance had have to be looked at and enforced. It would be enforced if we got a complaint. First exactly. of all, so I give you a chance. And better, communica and better communication between homeowners. I, I can't imagine. Some of the ones that I read seemed to me that the homeowner sat there and complained and never even called either the police or they didn't walk across the street. Right. They didn't talk to the builder. They just sat there and complained about it. So you don't get anywhere with that. It's, a, it's communication. I, as I previously said, I lived this for the last year and a half. Not two years ago, not three years ago, just now. Just was completed short, uh, a short time ago. Were there some issues? Yes. Was it inconvenient sometimes? Yes. But the world is not a per perfect world. And then I would communicate with them and the problem would be corrected. It wasn't really a big deal, but to some people, it is a big deal. So we have to do what's best for the majority. Anybody else? I do. Um, I think it should be noted that Karen says right from the beginning that this is a first step and that there are other areas of the current ordinance that may be tweaked because we feel we haven't studied all of them yet as they pertain to um, the results of the SHPOA uh, survey and as they pertain to the results of the, uh, co the correspondence that we have received. So what I'm trying to point out is that many of the people who were here at the last meeting and who came up and who voiced their concerns, and I'm talking about the contractors who came up, questioned had questions about the ordinances that are already in place, the size of the trailers. I remember one of them asked us about, what about a trailer that has an extension on it or something like that? And that is not even what we're talking about here. And I remember responding that at that time, it had four, this, this uh, proposal had four prongs to it, and that's all. It wasn't any of the other parts of that ordinance. My suggestion would be, now that we have presented these four to the general audience of contractors, now that we have debated it as a council, just these four, I think it's time to tweak them, change them, do something with them as a council, but still move forward with meeting with the contractors because it seems like, as I said, their biggest problems are the, the ordinances that are already in place. I think, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things we also have to remember, we all live here. 
We enjoy this year round. So our attitude very often, I know mine is, oh, it'll go away. I've got this and it isn't <clears> just that I'm here for this weekend and maybe one week, I live here. This is going to help all the tourists that we rely upon, all the people who come in and rent these homes for these extraordinary rentals and want to enjoy the peace and quiet of a vacation and they can't because there's things going on on the very weekend they arrive and all throughout the week. So we have to take that into consideration as well. And yes, I do recall that a lot of the contractors were belaboring things that were already in our ordinances. We're not changing them. Now, whether or not we can come to a better understanding with if we sit down and meet with a select group but once again, the select group are not the ones who are giving us the problems. Yes, but they, but they can give us some insight maybe that we here as council don't quite understand or don't and get. And I understand and that. I'm, but and I'm saying that, you know, I, I think we need to do this, but I want to make sure we do it right. There's no, you know, we're approaching winter now. There's, there's we have another six weeks or so to do this, and it's not going to affect anything. We don't have tourists here now in December and January. So to meet with a select group of these people and have a discussion, because like I said, at last month's meeting, it was really a one way they, they sent to us. We didn't have a chance to sit there and really talk to them, talk through each of these items and talk through the other things like parking and equipment storage you know, Stone Harbor is not a storage site for contractor equipment. Even if you move it every 48 hours, it, it's not right. I mean, if you're not using it, get it off the island. Those kind of things. Hear what they have to say. Or there are some words in here that need to be um, need to be added or some clarification that needs to go along with this. Like Mr. Papp has pointed out in his in his uh, communication with us, you know, you say it's one thing for the ordinance to say you've got to park your trailer in front of the construction site. There are many sites in Stone Harbor where because of the parking regulations, you can't do that. So now we start creeping all over the neighborhood. But that's uh, part of the old the, ordinance. That's part of the ordinance that's there now, not Yeah, I know, I know that. I know so that. But, we're so not, but if, we're gonna, this. if we're going to be fixing things in the ordinance, we can address those other things as well. You know, I mean, I believe this is a great first step, but let's make it a correct first step. I think we, we should at least sit down and hear what, what they have to say and then, and then move forward. But I mean, I'm only asking for another month or so. I think just quickly, I agree with what Mantour was saying. I agree that the Sunday would be something to think about because I do agree that we do deserve one day of peace no matter what we do on that day, you can do whatever you want on that day. And I also believe that this is a very good first step and I would vote on this tonight. I would vote positive on this tonight. I think it's a good beginning. Um, the other ordinances, which everybody should get a copy of and start to read them if you wanna understand the rest of the construction ordinances because they're sort of everywhere and not in one spot. Um, they should be co consolidated so that you just keep reading them. Um, that's what I think that as far as the parking and all the rest of that, that's not what we're talking about right now. And I do agree that it needs to be addressed, but I think that this is a sensible way to begin it. I don't think that, and uh, you said yourself, and I feel the same way, I don't think this is that hard. I think this is very respectful and very fair. I think if we looked at these five, or at least the first four, and had to title them, I think that we could say noise regulation because that's what it primarily is. Um, when we have real estate agents who tell us that they have to give refunds because the visitors to Stone Harbor are so distraught about what they had to hear that week or weekend or whatever, we do, we, it's incumbent upon us to address the noise. That's all these are. This has nothing to do with where you're gonna park your trailer. It's all about the noise. I agree, so and, and we're making this too big of a problem. I don't disagree that we should sit down and meet, but I think everything is getting convoluted. 
I think this needs to be addressed and we either bring it forward as an ordinance at our next meeting and it passes or it doesn't pass. Then we sit down and we talk with them and see what in the other ordinances. But everybody should read those ordinances first. Yeah, really. And know what we're you'll talking be, about. You'll be very surprised when and you read them. not tie one in with the other. I but I, don't, I, I think what I'm hearing is nobody is really disagreeing on these items. The only disagreement is whether to bring them forward in the next month or not. So that's the only disagreement. So what is the downside to taking the time to reviewing the entire ordinance and everything to do with construction now that our season is over and doing it once and doing it right and hearing from folks first? It's I don't see a downside to that because there is a, we're starting from a position of agreement is yeah, I, I what I see. What, what's the rush though? I don't understand why we have a rush. I don't think it's a rush. We've been talking about this for two months. Well, it takes you, mm. you, takes you what, 60 days to do an ordinance. You've got to do 60 days. So you've got to allow time to get this done so that the contractors can add this into what they have to do. So you're not giving them time. And I think you're just, as I said, convoluting the whole picture. The ordinances that are in existence, it's gonna take time to hash them out. They're big. They are <laughs> big. And, well, and the, there's no not easy being, solution. And, and I, need to, I need to agree with Ray where if the impetus from this, uh, my recollection is the impetus of all this was parking problems. And then we didn't address any parking problems. And I do agree with, with Ray on that, that that seems to be what started everything. Well, we addressed and then we don't even touch on it. Um, well, you did, we, we did. You did address that by the departments going back, understanding the ordinances, and agreeing that they would start enforcing, doing a better job of it. But there was no discussion of changing anything, the right. amount of vehicles that could be at a site, so right. on and so forth, things of that nature. I mean, because right. you still can fill up a street with a whole bunch of legal vehicles that are all affiliated. You could put 15 trucks at one construction site that are all legal. So, I mean, that being said, I just, I've, and I think even way back when, two months ago, we were the same. Everybody agreed that things needed to be addressed, but the disagreement lied in how quickly was it going to get done. So I think we're basically back to that. How quickly does this need to get done? Um, I don't know that anything, based on the fact that our season now is so far away, I don't see why slowing it down and meeting with, some folks and getting some insight and some information that we don't know could change somebody's mind, could make them actually dig in deeper and say, no, we have to do this. But it's leaving no stone unturned type thing. I don't know how we, could, how we can go wrong with that. Not at this time. I think if this was May, it would be a whole different story because we'd be losing another right. season. I think right. the, only, the only difference will be only because you are at the end of the year. If you don't introduce it at this meeting, then, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you would have to actually wait till January right. to do the interview because you can't introduce it in one year and, and right. adopt, right. and adopt but it. But meanwhile, and the contractors no, are going to know it's coming because right. they're going to be a part of the process. So they're going to know what's coming in April. So, I mean, if it held over and was introduced in January, again, that's not our season. Right. If we want to do it the, right. To me, that's all the more reason. Than it has to be. Yeah, to me, that's all the more reason to do, to do these this. now, and then take the next steps. But if one of these turns out to be a mistake, it well, could poss it could be done simultaneously, yes. We, uh, the we only problem is we're out of time already with the ordinance if we need 60 days. Okay, now what I'm Correct? doing is we would have to introduce it at the next forward with this. I don't mean today, but why don't we move forward with this and take it upon ourselves to set up meetings to be able to discuss all the other parts of the ordinances, the construction ordinances, because I really don't think that these are the kinds of things that the contractors had issues with. And that's basically what Ray said. I think it's the other part, but if we commit to review the rest of the, of the ordinances with, uh, the, with the eyesight of the contractors pointing things out to us, then we might be able to do part two of this. 
I think we all agreed it was going to be baby steps. This right. was our first step. And now when you're adding and going through all the other ordinances, and let me tell you, it's going to be a job because I've been working on them, and we're not going to get them done for next season. I can guarantee you that. All we're doing is stopping everything. We've moved forward. We've gotten it to this point. We all, most of us basically agree that this is a good first step. So let's take our first step, and then let's all take the challenge and take pull our ordinances, review them, and then meet when we know what we're all talking well, about with the contractors before we go forward. Because Ray did say you can bring it up for first reading, but set meetings. Because he was basically saying do it simultaneously. He's saying bring it back for first reading. But do not, it's not going to continue without meeting with construction. And as Mr. Pappas says in his letter involving police, construction officials, everybody, start having those meetings. It doesn't have to stop that part. It doesn't have to stop first reading. That's what I mean. Let's do this. Correct, right? That's what and I heard. And then meet with them and work so. on the other one. That's what I think I heard you yeah. say. No, I mean, we, I, we don't have to hold this up, but before we do a final, which one would that be? That would be what? You have your first right. reading 30 days later. Right, well, but keep in mind, if right. after you introduce it, you decide you want to change it, you will not have enough time this year to do that. You'll have to... The right. worst case is you'll just have to start scratch from scratch mm -hmm. as of January. I don't so know if that happens, it happens. That. that would be the I vote. Understand. I want to make sure that, would be that the vote. we're not hampering the contractors in any which way. I mean, we're thinking about us, about the homeowners, but they have to make a living also. So I think we need to consider. You're, nobody told me that the contract, contractors loved every one of these. So I no. think the meeting is pertinent to the fact that they might want to discuss some of this mm -hmm. and say, well, no, I'm okay with this, but I'm not okay with that. I so, would expect them to pervasively love any of these, quite frankly, yeah. but I think that given their reasonableness, I think they all understand the purpose and intent and are willing to abide by what we deem to be reasonable given the needs of our constituency. So why don't we have it prepared for first reading in two weeks? That can be done. But in the meantime, we're going to hear from Mr. Pappas during right. the next during I'd the like council to. meeting. But by the same token, we're going to set up some meetings as it moves forward because that is only the first reading. So if any of council members have grave concerns about it, there's not there's more than one vote, and there is time. And there may not be. I, and there may not give, be correct. Give us an opportunity to to explain to these few individuals what the big issues are. And uh, Mr. Pappas, I know, I, I think from your letter, uh, one of your concerns, if you would come up to the podium, please, I think, I think your big concern was. It's here. It's the next meeting. At the general meeting. It's, it's oh. already passed. Excuse me. Oh, here's the reason, because what I would like to do is we will, we will keep going round and round, and what I would like to do is adjourn the work session. We can hear from Mr. Pappas, and I just would like to know where we had a decision to bring it forward for first reading at the next meeting. Everybody is going to have a vote at that point, and then you would have another opportunity to vote 30 days later. So there's nothing that stops anybody from continuing to get more information within that next 45 day period. So with that, what I would like to do is adjourn this meeting, well then we'll open the regular meeting, we'll get the public comment, and then we'll open it up, we'll have time, we'll be following the, the, the meeting agenda, we'll get everybody on record, and so on and so forth. So, meeting to adjourn. Second. Oh, no, motion. Motion. <laughs> We're adjourned. <laughs>